That is Karami Beacon where we're going to walk today. Um, it's still part of the Ramsar site uh, of the southeastern corner of the island of Jersey. Um, we are heading now first toward uh, the rescue tower, which is that metal construction there, which is there you have your refuge. And this is um, a nice kind of um, seaweed of the upper shore, which is serrated rack. And then the bladder rack has more symmetrical bubbles. Yes. And these bubbles um, have an air-like air um, gas inside, so um, it makes the, the seaweed float when the tide comes in. They are called post horn worm, uh -huh. and um, they have the ability to just filter the calcium from, from the water. One other nice seaweed here, which is that one, which has that horn like um, the horn of a stag, therefore it is, it's called velvet horn because it's lovely and soft, it always has this velvety touch. It, this is a sea squirt. Sea squirts are very primitive animals and they live in colonies. Very, very, each animal is very, very small. And they can be, they can be black, orange, bright yellow. And baby oyster, they settle on something um, heavy or solid and sometimes you see them wedged into in between rocks ah. because they can't go you know grow sideways so they are really wedged in. Our walk out to Carame Beacon will take us past Seymour Tower and a full four kilometers out across the seabed. And although there are several experienced low water fishermen making the trek as well as us, unless one has that level of knowledge it is definitely not safe to venture so far from Jersey shoreline without being accompanied by a guide. But the area to which we are going can only be visited on a very few occasions during the year when the tide is at its very lowest. Although it may be difficult to appreciate, in six hours time the place on which we are standing will be covered by water which is up to 13 meters deep. This hole fast. Those furbelows have hold fast, which always look like two big lumps, or like, um, you know, you have these massage balls. Yeah. Furbelows always have a twist at the bottom. Uh, 1870s with the first um, oysters being imported from the United States. Yeah. So here we are near the Jersey. Look out in the distance. You'll actually know there's lots and lots of rocks. Finally, we're able to rest and enjoy our refreshments here at the farthest edge of Jersey. You can see this is the uh, same as our gas and the You can see that it's growing like a lush blanket over the uh, water. Here we are able to examine various beautiful life forms not readily found near the coast. All locally known as, known as Collie. This clever fisherman has just caught himself a lobster for the family supper. Throughout the walk, Trudy and Derek of Jersey Walk Adventures have stopped to explain the various points of interest and the flora and fauna that have been found along the way. John, that's a Jersey yep. oyster. Yep. Chitons are really primitive. They have been around for millions and millions of years. You can stay in the tower. You have to stay with an accredited guide. Uh, John was out with us just last week. We kayaked over, but you could obviously walk over. And it sleeps seven, plus the guide. Uh, it's got cooker, bunk beds, it's a mountain hut, mountain buffy, stone tent, all of what you like in the day. Fantastic location. On our return, we're able to make a brief stop to watch the men and ladies hard at work on Jersey's oyster beds. Half, this is being invaded with water. Uh, 
the guy the guys, if it's a good reason to go to the pub, have a beer or something, and then come back down, excuse to come back out.